Developing a critical consciousness. Because the world isn't fair. So what will you do about it? Now, developing a critical consciousness is the last of our leadership habits. Not the, the last of the habits you should develop in your life, but the last of the leadership habits we really focus on. Um, because it is a complicated big thing. You need to have developed a habit of pretty much all the rest of the leadership habits to really be able to dive in and start making a habit of developing a critical consciousness because it's a pretty complicated thing. But when you break it down, what developing a critical consciousness means is starting to understand how the world works and how you fit into the system. That's a big thing, right? Because there is a lot of different interconnected pieces. This is so it involves a creative thinking, understanding connections between things that seem like they're not connected. Um, is understanding how the world works in terms of systems and how people interact with others and how history and structures that are in place affect the world, how the messaging we receive affects us, how our brains react to certain kinds of messaging. All of these things are involved in understanding how the world works and specifically how you fit into the system. So developing a critical consciousness is really understanding those two pieces, knowing the dynamics of the world and how you fit into that, how you are affected by history and structures and systems that are in existence, right? How your background uh, fits into that, how you benefit from those things, how maybe you don't benefit so much or even you, you're at a disadvantage at sometimes because of these things. Um, because once you understand that, right, you can start doing something about it. And that's why developing a critical consciousness is so important, especially as you get older and go out into the world on your own, beyond high school, right, if you're going to college or out in a career. There are a lot of things that are in place already that if you're not aware of and don't learn about um, handling and, and dealing with in a particular way are really going to affect you because you can really control yourself. You can control the things around you or others can control you. And it's your choice, right? But you have to understand how it all works. You can be affected by the world around you. You can, you know, become a victim, if you want to put it that way, or um, sort of passive in the world and have the world do things to you. You could have that and you won't be as successful and things won't feel so good. Or you can take control over those things and understand that, yes, there are still things that work against you that are not to your benefit. But if you understand that and how things work, you can figure out ways around it. You can creatively think to um, get around it and push yourself forward in spite of some of the things that work against you. But also knowing there are things that, you know, work in your favor and knowing how to use those. So really developing a critical consciousness is taking control of your life and the world around you and not sort of sitting back and getting lazy or uh, becoming a victim and letting other things control your life for you. Okay. This is a really big one. This is one of those ones that I don't think seeing a couple slides right now is really going to help you understand what it's about. It's pretty deep and it involves again, um, really have understanding the other leadership habits in a lot of ways, but this is sort of the big picture. This is where we want to go, how these uh, leadership traits really build together, these leadership habits build together um, to give you control and power over your own world and what you do in it. So Again, a, a few things that you can start working on. Again, if you have really developed most of the other leadership habits or at least are comfortable and understand a lot of the other leadership habits, here are some things that developing a critical consciousness entails. The, the first thing is identifying the difference between social pressure and what you want. We are very much driven by the things that are presented to us about the people around us, the opinions around us, the culture we grow up in. We get a lot of messages a lot of the time. Um, we are social animals. We respond to social pressure. That's peer pressure. That's media pressure. That's bigger cultural pressure, right? So the first part of developing a critical consciousness is understanding the difference between social pressure, like what I'm being told to do or sort of the things that I feel like I should do based on the messages I'm getting from either the people around me, the culture around me, uh, the media around me and what I actually want for myself, right? That's very different. A lot of times we think we want certain things based on the social pressure that is being put on us, the messages we're getting from other people, 
And now, those aren't necessarily bad things. There's a lot of positive social pressures to do the right thing that we get. But we still need to understand the difference between what is coming from outside of us and what is coming from inside of us. Is there a way that I can make what I want go in line with the social pressures, with the things that are happening around me? Are there ways that I need to push back against some of the social pressure to get what I want? Or, on the other hand, are there ways that I need to actually give up what I want because the social pressure is more important in that case, right? But the first step is really understanding the difference between what other people want for me, what my culture wants for me, what the world around me wants for me, and what I want for me, okay? The second thing is identifying your own culture and cultural norms. This actually, they go together, right? But it's really understanding where do you come from? How does your background, your experiences, your history, your family, um, your ethnic identity, your gender identity, a lot of, you know, all these different pieces. How did those go into um, who you are and your personality and your cultural norms, like the rules of your cultural, the things that you sort of take for granted? How did those... um, lead into who you are Um, how do those things again go into the social pressures upon you how do those things tell you what you should want right you need to understand that about yourself really understand where you come from where your beliefs come from before you can move on so then once you can identify your own culture then you need to start learning about different cultures right identifying what are some norms for other people or some rules in different cultures what are the messages other cultures might put on themselves or different cultures might have about you their opinion about you and the culture you come from your background right you need to learn about different cultures this again goes in line with seeking new perspectives but really understanding the difference between your background your experience and how that helps you identify with other people's experiences and cultures and how that identifies them and then finally and last big piece is understanding media messaging okay is understanding the messages that we get from ads from tv from news from the internet right there's a lot of messages out there especially now right there's more and more and more coming at us all the time so we need to understand how those messages work to sometimes trick us into thinking a certain way sometimes into you know telling us something that we need to know how can we um differentiate between what's really important to know what's important and helpful um, from these messages that might not be so helpful to us and might actually make us feel worse about ourselves now again these are not all the pieces that are in part of developing a critical con- co- critical consciousness but they're all pieces that help you start getting towards that direction and again this one's a very big deep one i do not expect you to understand this one based on just a couple slides um, so it really is one that needs to come from um, really developing a habit of the other leadership habits before we dive into this one and really kind of understand what it means. But this ultimately is where uh, we're trying to go with all these different pieces because we want to be able to take control of our own lives and also just in general make this world a better, more just place. Um, but it's it's not a fair place, right? Like things are not equal everywhere so developing critical consciousness helps us to start sorting that out to figure out the best for ourselves and how we might be able to make some changes to to improve the world for other people